Good morning and welcome to the Masters of Enlightenment. Our masterclass series with historians and scholars who make as their life's work the study of Nile Valley civilization. Today we continue with Dr. Ahmed Osman, an esteemed scholar, author, and lecturer who has but one passion and one purpose, and that is to lift the veil and to give Nile Valley civilization what the world knows as ancient Egypt, its walk in the sun, its due respect for its achievements and its accomplishments. Because Dr. Osman believes that ancient Egypt and its glorious history has to some extent been suppressed and been overshadowed by the achievements of Greece and the achievements of Rome. Dr. Usman has no argument with the achievements of Greece nor the achievements of Rome, but simply wants to allow ancient Egypt to be seen as a glorious contributor to what we know as civilization. He has an assertion that we will explore today. And that assertion is that Pharaoh Tutmosis III, the builder of the first world empire of politics, economics, and trade was in fact the flesh and blood David of the Bible. He will underscore his assertion with archeological evidence, with common denominators between the two men in his own personal awesome way, in my opinion. And so now we go to our Master of Enlightenment for this segment of Masterclass, Dr. Ahmed Osman. Good morning, Dr. Osman, how are you? Good morning, Stan. I'm okay. So we are so glad to be with you. Um, as I said in the opening, um, as we have discussed history, um, you have no argument with Greece's achievements, nor do you have any argument with Rome's achievements. You simply want Egypt's achievements to be seen for what they are, major contributors to what we call civilization. Now, I wanna ask you, why do you believe from archeological evidence that Pharaoh Tutmosis III is the biblical David? Let us start with the biblical story. Uh, at the 10th century BC in Canaan, we have different uh, social and political uh, groups. In the north, we have Israel. In the West Bank, we have Judah, uh, except uh, Jerusalem was be belonging to the Jupiter at the time. The Philistines had established themselves on the south coast, which is a Gaza Strip of today, and some Canaanites at, at, the, at, the, at the south area. At that time, it is said, according to Samuel, Book of Samuel, because we have the story in the Book of Samuel and the Books of Kings and in the Psalms. We have uh, uh, Samuel the prophet is asked by the people of Israel in the north to establish for them a king, to make a king. So he got, he got somebody called Saul and he anointed him to be the first king of Israel. However, Saul was a little bit uh, uh, uncomfortable in his life and he wanted some kind of entertainment. So he sent uh, Samuel to Bethlehem where there was a, a young lad of 15 years old. Uh, he was a shepherd and he played the harp. He was called David. And Samuel brought David to Saul who worked for him for some time to entertain him. Now, sometime after that, there was a kind of uh, confrontation between 
the Israelis, uh, Israelites, in fact, and the uh, Philistines. And there was a, 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 a warrior, I mean, giant warrior, uh, who emerged from the Philistine uh, uh, and challenged any Israeli to come to, uh, to his challenge. But everybody was afraid the guy was very powerful, very big body and has a many armored uh, protecting them. So everybody was afraid. Uh, by chance, uh, uh, David, young David, was bringing some food to uh, the, the soldier, the people there, and he found this situation and he presented his, himself as the challenger. And everybody was surprised because this guy is a young boy, uh, an old boy, and the other and the other was a giant, you see. But, uh, I mean, with a, a kind of, of, of a small stone, he was able to hit him on his forehead and the giant fell down and Israel shouted and they were very happy and they regarded David as a great hero. This is what the story says. So, although King Saul was happy with what happened, but he was jealous and he thought maybe this young boy will be more uh, popular and uh, can challenge him on his throne. So he planned to kill David. So David, according to the story, took uh, 600 men, man, man, they followed him, they are his followers, 600 people, young men, and escaped. And he went to the king of the Philistines at Gath, city called Gath, a city, and he worked for, for the Philistines. He and his people worked for the Philistines for a year. After this year, King Saul himself died, was killed in, in a fighting with the Philistines. So David left with his people, the, the Philistine king, and he went to his own home, uh, back to his home, Bethlehem, and there he was announced king of Judea, Judah. And then uh, Israel as well uh, accepted him, so he became the unifying king of Judah and Israel. This is the story of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After that, we have called that the first thing he did, he went with his 600 men and entered Jerusalem, which is was uh, uh, under Jupiter's uh, uh, power at the time. He entered the city uh, mm -hmm. and he built his own house there, a, a palace for himself. Uh, he asked the Phoenician uh, Hiram uh, uh, to bring him wood to b build his own house. Uh, and then he went out and he fought the Philistines and defeated them. He fought the uh, the Canaanites and defeated them. And strangely enough, although as we can see, there is no evidence, there is no story telling that uh, the Philist, the Israel, the, the Elites had any empire before that time. But the story of someone says that he. He went north to North Syria to re-establish, to reconfirm his uh, uh, borders in the northern uh, Syria, in, in the northern Euphrates, uh, in the northern Syria. I mean, I don't know how it was, uh, but this is what, what is said in the. So he went there and he fought, and he gained uh, about a thousand chariots of his enemies and 700 warriors and so he had i mean instead of 600 people he had now a big army and he established an empire extending from northern syria northern Euphrates, uh, 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 to the borders of sinai in egypt he became an emperor and then one day he was sitting in his uh, house in palace in Jerusalem and he did not 
he was not able to go to bed. So he went on the top of his house and he looked and he found next door a woman bathing a, 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 and he, a beautiful woman. So he, he asked about this woman and they told him that this is a wife of one of his soldiers because he, at the time he had a, a town, a, 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 a sieged town, his army was sieging a, a, a town and he was waiting for it to fall in his hands. Uh, uh, the husband of this uh, Bathsheba, her name is Bathsheba, was uh, uh, called Uriah. He was a soldier fighting with the siege uh, at the sea city in his own army. So he asked for Sheba to come to visit him in his house. And she came and he made love to her. Few uh, weeks uh, later, the, the woman, Bathsheba, told uh, uh, David that she was pregnant. And he was a little bit uh, embarrassed. How can he deal with this situation? She is a married woman. So he sent to the front, sent to his army, asking for her husband, Uriah, to be brought back to Jerusalem. So hoping he can go with his wife. And so nobody would know who, who, who the child, her child will be, the father of the child. However, Uriah, contrary to what David hoped, did not go to the house with his wife. He said, how can I go to the house of my wife while my uh, friends and my, uh, I mean, uh, soldiers like me waiting, uh, sieging the city, I cannot go to my house now. So he stayed out of his house. So David was a little bit uh, angry. So he sent him back to the front and asked the leaders there of the army to put him in a dangerous position in the front of the army so he can be killed. And that happened, he was killed. And so David married Bathsheba and she gave birth to his her son and he became known as Judai the first who, who became King David. In the, this is the story. Solomon. Yeah. This is Solomon. Yeah. He, he was born, give it the name of Judaida at his birth. Later he became known as, as Solomon. However, uh, some time later, we know of a different story that uh, because Solomon had different other, I mean, David has other wives and has other children. And one of them was called Absalom. And Absalom had a, 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 a sister called Tamara. One half brother of Tamara and Absalom, I mean, made love to his sister, Tamara. So Absalom was very angry with what happened. And he left the town and he went and declared himself king of, of Judah and Israel. The young boy, Absalom, I mean, declared himself as a king. So, and he came to challenge David in Jerusalem. So David, I mean, the mighty warrior who established the whole empire, suddenly was afraid of his son Absalom. And he took 600 men from Jerusalem and he escaped to the East Jordan, uh, being afraid of his own son. I mean, this is a story. So, uh, and then eventually Absalom was killed, in, uh, met his death, and David came back and he chose, uh, I mean, uh, Solomon to be his successor. This is a story in the Bible, in the Book of Kings and Book of Samuel. Now, in modern times, uh, archaeologists started digging. I mean, they want to find evidence of this empire established by David in the 10th century BC. I mean, different people came from America, from Britain, from France, from, and, and from Israel, when the Israelis established the, the I mean, state in recent, I mean, in 1948. Uh, I mean, 
uh, as you know, in archaeology, they date the thing according to different levels. I mean, the top level would be modern times. Uh, when you go back, uh, it's different, and they can uh, they can date every level according to either uh, uh, whatever I mean uh, archaeological uh, uh, items they find with, with some names of kings or dates, uh, or, or by carbon dating, they can know exactly uh, which level belongs to uh, which time and so on. So they were looking to the level, uh, ground level of, of 10th century BC. They were looking for evidence because David is supposed to have built his own palace in Jerusalem. And he fought different cities and destroyed them. So we need some evidence of destruction of, of sit, some cities by uh, on this level of King David, as well as evidence of building uh, uh, a palace in Jerusalem. Uh, I mean, uh, they, they call he, the area he established was called Zion. He called it Zion. It became mm. Zion, uh, Zion. So uh, archaeologists have not been able to find, and uh, they found some sheds of different pottery and so on, but no name, no remains of walls, no remains of palaces. No, remain neither in Jerusalem nor in any other part of the uh, uh, supposed empire. So, <laughs> Except so in some okay. cases, they found evidence of the uh, Philistines because the Philistines came during the 12th century. There was an eruption, volcanic eruptions in some uh, Greece uh, islands, and people escaped there, and he, they came to the west. Uh, coast of the Mediterranean, to the east coast of the Mediterranean, they, they destroyed some cities in Asia Minor and in Syria and in, in Palestine. And so some destruction was found uh, in, in this uh, 12th uh, century level, but not in the 10th century level. No. Okay. Now, let me ask this question while we're here. Yeah. Um, there have been some Israeli archaeologists of note who have confirmed what you are saying. Um, what were their names again? Uh, professor Israel Felkenstein. He is a professor of archaeology in Tel Aviv University. He said, he denied completely that there was any evidence in Jerusalem to confirm that David, uh, I mean, at that time, uh, he said there's no evidence whatsoever. And uh, his uh, result is, was accepted by all major uh, archaeologists in, in the world. Obviously, now, now, yeah. now, Dr. Osman, you did find that there was an empire between the Euphrates in northern Syria and the Nile and the Sinai. Now, it's not me. It, it, it is known from history and from archaeology now, everybody knows that because it has been done, that during the 15th century BC, I mean, Hatshepsut, during the 18th dynasty, Hatshepsut was ruler. I mean, she married Tutmosis II and she was a, a queen of Egypt. And, uh, but uh, the, the son of, I mean, Hotep Tutmosis II, uh, uh, to, from another woman, an older woman called Isis, became known as Thutmose the Third. I mean, uh, when but he was a young boy when his father died, so the the Hatshepsut didn't want him to be a king, and she ruled herself until uh, she died, and Thutmose the Third became the only ruler, and he became the major historical. I mean, like Napoleon of the early. He went to fight in, in, in Canaan and Syria. And he, I mean, because his grandfather, Moses the first, after kicking the Hyksos out of Egypt, his grandfather, Moses the first, went all the way to the northern Syria in the, in the Ophrates, and he established his name, he, he wrote his name there. So when when the Bible says that 
David was going to recover his borders at the Lord. In fact, he, she was talking about the, the Moses II who was trying to restore his borders of his grandfather. So Moses the first. The Moses the first established it, but he didn't leave any military thing to protect his, his empire and he came back. So it, 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 it was lost again. So Tutmosis the third went to re-establish the border of his grandfather. We don't find this in the, in the biblical characters, but we find it here in the Tutmosis case. Anyhow, the first major war uh, was who, who, which met him was in, in an area called uh, Armageddon. Armageddon is a great mountain in northern uh, coast of Israel uh, now. And down on the down uh, after crossing the, the mountain down, we have we had this city of Armageddon. It was a, a, a fortified city, and the people there at the time obviously uh, Canaan was not a state. There were maybe three hundred different towns. Each one of them was a separate uh, uh, entity ruled by a, a ruler. So all these rulers gathered together with some rulers from Syria and the north. They gathered 300 of them, gathered at Armageddon, waited for Tutmosis the third to come to see them. However, rather they were waiting in front of the gates of the city. However, he surprised them by coming from the top of the mountain. He came behind them. So they, he were, they were scattered and they went into the city of Armageddon and closed the door, and he laid a siege on that city. Now, but Moses III, when he left Egypt with his army for this fight, he took with him the Ark of Amun, of his god Amun. And he had to wait seven months before the siege ended and uh, Armageddon, I mean, uh, uh, felt. During that period, for the seven months, the statement of, 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 uh, he made says, the record says that he went with his people to a, a fortified city to the east of Armageddon, to the east of, 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 of Armageddon, of, of this Armageddon. Har Armageddon, Har is a mountain, to the east of them. I mean, and although the name of Jerusalem was not mentioned, but you see, we find eventually he wrote all the names of all the cities in, in, in the Karnak war. He wrote the names of all the cities that he conquered, that he fought in. But he did, wrote a, a name of another city that did not fight him. The only city that did not stand against him was called uh, Kadesh. Kadesh, which became Orushalayim Orush after that, the, the city of, of Jerusalem. So what we know, I mean, from that, that he went to to stay for the seven months in Kadesh, which is Jerusalem. He went to Jerusalem and having his own uh, ark of his own God with him, uh, obviously the king has to make uh, rituals every morning has to make rituals with God. So being a holy city because of, of, of its rock uh, uh, in Jerusalem, obviously the, the, the main place he would put his ark would be on the rock, the holy rock to worship. So he was the first, I mean, and surprising enough, although the Bible says, the, the Samuel book says that, the, uh, I mean, David brought the ark into the, uh, into Jerusalem, he did not speak about the ark of the covenant, which is the ark of Moses and the Ten Commandments. He said for the first time and the only time in the Bible, the ark of the Lord, not the ark of the covenant. So ark of the Lord, so it, it was in fact the ark of Amun Hot, Amun Hot III with the ark of Amun that he, we know from history that he brought with him there, mm -hmm. you see. And, and so, uh, I mean, uh, the, 
when when we look when when archaeologists look for the Armageddon because Armageddon became part of the empire David's empire inherited by uh, Solomon so when they dug uh, the, in Armageddon they found only evidence of the 15th century BC the structure also in Syria also in all other places all cities were were, were, were destroyed by war during the 15th century BC. Now you mentioned some historical facts to support the archaeology. Um, the right, the pyramid texts, the writings on the Temple of Karnak of Tutmosis's victories. Um, we hear of the stables of Solomon, where the chariots were kept. In fact, in Jerusalem, were there ever any archaeological proof that there was a stable there that uh, the pharaohs of Egypt maintained a garrison of any type there? I, I mean, how to the third, whom I regard to be Solomon, uh, yeah, ha he had a garrison there. And not only had a garrison there, but sh of charities and so on. He also established a small shrine, a small temple there for his charioteers to worship. Yeah, uh, it is, I mean, uh, I mean, Hoti the third established a temple there. I mean, I, I think this is the, what is meant usually by the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. You see, strangely enough, four years ago, although no evidence, no name, no evidence of any kind of David was of, of, of a biblical David, was found in Jerusalem four years ago. A young Israeli girl of 12 years, she found every, an amulet with the name of Tutmosis the third <laughs> in the same location where they are uh, digging uh, for, for, for David. She found the real historical David, the only David found in Jerusalem is Tutmosis the third. And if, if you look at the name of David, Tutmos, mm -hmm. Tutmos, the word Tut in hieroglyphic uh, for Tutmos is different from Tut Tutankhamun. In Tutankhamun, the, in hieroglyphic, Tut means image. Tut Ankhamun, the living image of, of Amun. But in the case of, I mean, of Tutmos, Tut is, is Hermes. Tut, Tut is Toth, the Egyptian. Uh, the Egyptian god of magic and knowledge is called Tos. Tut and the Egyptian T becomes a D in Hebrew. Tut in this case becomes Dud in Hebrew. And Dud in Hebrew is the Hebrew word in the Hebrew Bible for King David. This is the name of King David in the film. The, the real father of the Israelites who brought from Sarah the Hebrew was the Egyptian Pharaoh Tutmos the third. I mean, strangely enough, although in the first books of the Bible we find Abraham as the great ancestor of the Israelites, from there onwards, after that, we find David represents that becomes the main uh, great ancestor of the Israelites. So the Israelites were half Egyptian and half Hebrew, in fact. Well, so now we have the establishment of the empire from northern Syria in the Euphrates Valley to Sinai and the borders of Egypt where the Nile overflows into the Mediterranean. Um, we now have a historical figure who is real. We have historical records of his journeys, his wars, that's documented. We even find artifacts of him. Um, the empire is interesting in the sense that now amulets, cartouches, and other insignia of Tutmosis III have been fought, found as far west east as the Yangtze River Valley in China and as far south as deep into Southern Africa. Um, do you think 
that his empire did indeed have contacts with other places around the world? Of course, certainly. I mean, obviously, we have still to, to confirm how it went there, but uh, his empire was between the Ophrates and the Egypt. Uh, however, uh, his trade must have gone all over the place to uh, China and, and, and India, maybe even to South America. We don't know. I mean, trade at the time, the Phoenicians carried the trade all over the place for that uh, time. And it, I mean, as we find, as you say, if they have found, I mean, cartouche of his name, as far as that, the cartouche could not have been there without somebody to take it there. That's so right. There is historical archaeological evidence, and we need to, to try and, and see more evidence of that in the future. Well, well, science is the great rewarder of all of our research. Uh, Dr. Osman, thank you for sharing with us uh, who the historical David is. And next, uh, time we have a conversation, uh, you have another assertion that his great-grandson, Pharaoh Amenhotep III, was the biblical Solomon. So now the empire has been built. We have a historical figure of fact, not fiction, of flesh and blood, and the empire continues. And another character who the historical record knows well through the Bible, Solomon, or the man of peace, is the next place we will turn our next conversation with Dr. Osman, who says that Solomon, the man of peace, is in fact Pharaoh Amenhotep III, grandson of Tutmosis III. So, the next time we get together in Masters of Enlightenment series, we will turn to Solomon. Who is the real Solomon? And was he in fact a Pharaoh of ancient Egypt? This is Stan Matthews in Masterclass. Thank you for joining our Enlightenment series with Dr. Ahmed Osman.